Almost 50 years before the mechanical recording of the human voice, the English journalist Henry Mayhew began to compile a natural history of London's labouring poor. He roamed the streets of mid-19th century London, armed with nothing more than patience, shorthand, and what seems to have been a remarkable ear for the peculiarities of idiomatic English. He recorded the witness of several thousand men and women who plied their meagre and uncertain trades in the Victorian metropolis. Mayhew hoped to extract some large-scale scientific generalization from the inquiry, but in the event, he was overwhelmed by the sheer quantity and richness of his material, so that by his own standards, the enterprise was a failure. But Mayhew's failure turns out to have been our good fortune because of the unprecedented archive of personal experience which he bequeathed. Without the benefit of a tape recorder, we can virtually hear the anonymous inhabitants of a world that we have now lost. An intelligent and trustworthy man, Mayhew reports, computed that not two in ten costermongers had ever been in the interior of a church. But when Mayhew pursued his inquiries with this coster girl, he found a surprising amount of scriptural knowledge, most of it garbled, when he asked her about religion. Oh, oh only last night Father was talking about religion. We often talk about religion. Father has told me that God made the world, and I've heard him talk about the first man and woman as was made and lived. Must be more than 100 years ago now. But I don't like to speak on what I don't know. Father, too, has told me about our Saviour, what was nailed on a cross, to suffer for such poor people as we is. Father has told us, too, about his giving a great many poor people a penny loaf and a bit of fish each, which proves him to be a very kind gentleman. Ten Commandments was made by him, they'd say, and he performed them, too, among other miracles. Yeah, this is part of what our Saviour tells us. We are to forgive everybody and do nobody no injury. I don't think I could forgive an enemy if she injured me very much. Sure, I don't know why I couldn't, unless it is, unless it is that I'm poor and never learned to do it. If a girl stole my shawl and didn't return it back or give me the value on it, I couldn't forgive her. But if she told me she lost it off her back, I shouldn't be so hard now. We poor girls ain't very religious. But we are better than the men. We all of us thanks God for everything, even for a fine day. As for sprats, we always say they're God's blessing for the poor and think it's hard of the Lord Mayor not to let them come in before the 9th of November just because he wants to dine off them. Which he always do. Yeah, we knows for certain they eat plenty of sprats at the Lord Mayor's blanket. May you asked her about the creation? They say in the Bible that the world was created in six days. The beasts, the birds, the fish and all. But sprats was among them, of course. There was only one out at that time as was made, and that was the ark for Adam and Eve and their family. Seems very wonderful indeed how all this world was done so quick. Should have thought England alone would have took double the time, shouldn't you, sir? But then it says in the Bible, God Almighty is a just and true God, and of course, time will be nothing to him. What did she think about death? Well, when a good person's dying, he says, the Lord has called upon him and he must go. Can't feel it, think what it means, though. Unless it is that an angel comes, like when we were dreaming, and tells the party he's wanted in heaven. And where was heaven, then? Oh, I know where heaven is. It's above the clouds. And they're placed there to prevent us seeing into it. That's where all the good people go. But I'm afraid there's very few costers among the angel. Especially those as deceased poor gals. Mayhew then asked her about the phrase, world without end. What did she make of that? <sighs> nah. Nah, I don't think this world could well go on forever. There's a great deal of ground in it, certainly, and it seems very strong at present, but they say there's to be a flood on Earth and earthquakes, and that'll destroy it. Earthquake ought to have took place some time ago, as people tells me. Never heard no more about it. If we cheat in the streets, I know we shan't go to heaven. But it's very hard upon us, for if we didn't cheat, we couldn't live profits is so bad. It's the same with the shops. I suppose the young men there won't go to heaven neither. But if people won't give the money, both costers and tradesmen must cheat, and that's very hard. 
Well, look at apples. Customers want them for less than they cost us. So we're forced to shove in bad ones as well as the good ones. And if we're to suffer for that, well, it does seem to me dreadful cruel. Time Watch returns to BBC Two in two weeks. Next tonight, it's The Money Programme 